Tell my mother. Tell my father. What is your name, son? Joseph Sperry. God forgive me. I hope you like living with the ghosts and ghouls. Because according to everyone in Cape Devlin, this place is haunted right to the rafters with them. That's it for your luggage, then? Yeah, thanks. You're not from around here, are you? No, from Maine. Well, you'll be hearing all sorts of wild stories from the locals. What kind of stories? Huh. A lot of nonsense is what it is. Although, when a man lives out here alone, well, the mind starts to conjure up things. So I have to ask, what in hell made you take this job? Well, uh, my dad, um, the bank took everything of his, including his boat. I needed the job so I could buy it back. Your dad's a fisherman then? Yeah, my dad, his dad before him. It's in the blood then. Also. It's a shame to see the old gal in such rough shape. She used to be something to behold. Does it still work? More than likely, lad. She hasn't been lit up in years. I think all she really needs is a fresh coat of paint, a little tender love and care. It's getting dark. Let's get some lights on in here for you. The hell? I don't know what's up with these damn birds. They just keep flying into the side of the house and breaking their necks. It's the strangest thing. Never seen anything like it. Must be diseased or something. Breaker box is in the basement.
Joker. You hear that? I don't hear anything. Of course, the deaf is an old hug. Sounds like voices. Anyone else here? Not that I know of that. Well, there's your voices. Someone left the radio on. You go nuts on me out here, all right? I've seen it happen to other fellas before. Seriously? This place can do strange things to a man. Or a woman. Harry Garrity's daughter was one of them. Harry was the last keeper. That's Harry right there, in a photo with his daughter. He passed about 20 years ago. We found him dead in that chair, radio blaring away beside him. This place is pretty much how Harry left it. We didn't really know what to do with his stuff when he died. No one wanted it. So we just kept it all here. Well, I best get back to the mainland. Some of the ladies from the Lighthouse Restoration Committee have set up a bed and blankets for you in one of the upstairs rooms. All right. Thanks, and uh, thanks again for giving me a ride out here. My pleasure, lad. You know, Tom, I'm real glad you took this job. We were having a hell of a time finding anyone else that would. It's a terrible time of year to be doing this type of work, but the committee wanted it done by summer. Yeah, I, I appreciate the work, though. I'm the owner of Murphy's Pub in Cape Devon. You need anything, you come see me. Especially if you're looking for the best clam chowder around. Take you up on that. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Please. Call me Murph. No need for formalities, lad. All right. Thanks, Murph. <sighs> Crazy old man.
Glad I'm not sleeping in here tonight. Who does this? Hope you enjoy your stay on the island. Night, ladies. You know what? As adorable as you all are, I'm gonna go sleep downstairs. Bottoms up, Mr. Garrity. Well, Dad, a few months of this and I'll have your boat back.
So how are you doing there, man? Hanging in there. Not easy being isolated and alone like that. I don't think I'm entirely alone. You know if there's any pigs on the island? Pigs? Not that I've heard of. Though I guess some of old Leo Paso's pigs could still be running around out there. Leo was the caretaker before Garrity. The story goes that one night he got real drunk and went out to feed the hogs. His wife found him in the pig pen the next morning. Well, what was left of him anyway? Mrs. Passo slaughtered the pigs and then went about completely losing her marbles. She would come into town on occasion, always nattering on about demon hogs, devils and such. Then, one night, she climbed to the top of the lighthouse and jumped to her death. <laughs> Relax, lad. As I said, that's how the story goes. My take is the old bird finally got tired of her husband drinking and carrying on. Killed him herself and fed him to the pigs. Then she made up the story and eventually threw herself off the lighthouse out of pure guilt. It's good, huh? Oh, really good. Thank you. Yeah, it's perfect. Easy, kid. Don't give him a bigger head than he's already got. It ain't that good. You don't know a damn thing about good charter, tough. Bit touchy, ain't he? Usual Murph. Tough Johns. Tom Darty. So you're the one they got fixing up the lighthouse out on that godforsaken island. Yeah. People around here may call me tough, but you are a tougher man than I. Stay out on that island. All alone. Why is that? Well, I've got some stories. Oh, now, tough. Don't start telling the kid any of your tall tales. I don't think I can bear sitting through another one. Are you quite finished? You see, this is how paying customers are treated around here. Fine. Out with the then already. Well, some time back. I was dating this fine young gal, the prettiest little thing. And a buddy of mine, a guy by the name of Dwight Rexford, I believe, was making a play for a friend of hers. So we decided we'd go out for a little picnic out to your island. As we got close to that island, this fog started to creep in. Now, this ain't no ordinary fog. Now, nah, it, was, it was wetter heavier, colder. Oh yeah, the fog. You ever tell a tale without fog in it? Perhaps I should just restart my story every time I'm interrupted. Well, we made land. And despite our reservations about the fog, we had ourselves our little picnic. We were having so much fun. I even snuck a little kiss. Well, you know, it was getting late. We figured we'd better head on back. But when we got back to that shore, that same fog was just hanging over the island like, a, like an evil spirit. Now, we didn't want to navigate the rocks in our pitiful little boat, so we figured we'd just camp out till morning. So we made the girls a little makeshift shelter. Of course, we couldn't talk them into letting us stay with them. Dwight screwed that up. So we had to rough it out on the cold, hard ground. Now, it took a little while, but uh, I finally dozed off. Not for long, though. Something woke me up. 
Strangest thing I'd ever heard. It sounded like a, like some kind of creature, like a, like a hog. Yeah. Yeah, but this is no ordinary hog. No, this hog was straight from the pits of hell itself. So I stood up, trying to see the creature. I couldn't see a damn thing. But then the beam from that lighthouse passed around. Now imagine going from the darkest night to the brightest of days in a flash. So I looked over, checking on the girls. They were safe and sound, of course, sleeping like angels. But my friend, the white, well, he is nowhere to be found. Then the light faded, and I was plunged back in the darkness. I felt like an eternity. But I know it was just a moment before that light came back around again. But when it did, I saw something that will haunt me for the rest of my days. I swear to you, hand to God, I saw fingers. Now fingers, skeletal fingers. And they were wrapped around toward white. They were, uh, they were covering his mouth so he couldn't scream as he dragged him down into the earth. What happened next? I don't know, it's, uh, I guess it was kind of a blur. I remember somehow pulling the white free. We went and got the girls and uh, sailed like hell for home. <laughs> you see, lad, a terrible storyteller if there ever was one. You don't even have a proper ending for that one, Tough. And what's this with the hell hog? I'm just telling you what I saw. You know, that could be a good one, if you'd work on the ending. Well, uh, <clears throat> I really hit the spot. You want another bowl? Ah, I better get going. <laughs> well, the fog is starting to roll in pretty thick out on the bay. You be careful. Uh, well, thanks. Hey, uh, nice meeting you, Tom. Oh, you too. Good luck out there. Thanks. Th thanks again, Murph, for the soup and suds. Anytime, lad. Hellhog. I may have been a pig. Oh. <sighs> I'll take care of the big one. Now for the little one. Better not find you in this thing in the morning.
oppressed. They must be free. to do with this. You guys have any idea what this is? I figured as much. Here, it's on the house. I better not. Turning down free beer. It's not like the time I know. You, uh, you feeling all right, kid? Yeah. No. I don't know. I, I just feel like maybe I should lay out the sauce for a while. What's going on? You're not looking so great. No offense. I think I'm losing it, guys. I'm hearing things. I'm seeing things. It's an old house, Tom. Old houses make noise. You said yourself you've got a rat problem and possible hog problem. Did, did you say hog? Oh, come on, Tough. Don't start with the hell hog. Have you seen this hog? I mean it, Tough. Let it go. What have you seen, Tom? Look, we, we, we won't judge you. Well, Murph probably will, already has. You can tell us, Tom. I guess I've just heard things mostly. I, I guess I've seen shadows. Shadows? Yeah, like I'll, I'll think the hog is right there behind me and then spin around and nothing. I think you're right, lad. I think you should probably lay off the sauce. That's what I thought, Sam. Freaking out! Oh, you're fine, lad. <sighs> Only natural to go a little bit crazy being isolated like that. You just need to come to the mainland more often. Visit me. And tough, although I don't know why you'd want to. Or, better yet, find yourself a girl. Hmm? Need the work. Well, like I told you before, lad, we're real happy to have you here. I don't know what this means, but I think it's important. And I think you were meant to find it.
Real funny.
Why'd you even bring it inside? There's a bomb in there. Oh, a bomb? She did. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to her. And to you. It was a real shame. Terrible tragedy. Do you know there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about what could have been if I'd been alive when she killed herself? But she wouldn't have killed herself if you were alive. That's not entirely the truth, Tom. You see, it wasn't my death that drove her to it. Oh, no. <laughs> my death was just a promontory on her descent into madness. There's an evil on this island. An evil that she could no longer run from. An evil that took a hold of her and wouldn't let her go until she was dead. I know. Because it took me to... Yeah, it took me, as it took old Garrity and who knows how many others. And Tom, you're next. You've seen it. You've seen it, haven't you? I've, I've seen a lot of things. Things I can't explain. Like you, for instance. I'm not talking about ghosts. Talking about the warder. You've seen it. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh huh. What about all those traps out front? They'll do nothing to stop it. You're talking about the hog. That's no hog. It's a demon. It guards this island. Guards it from what? I haven't much time. What is it guarding? Never mind that now. You need to tell me how to beat it. I don't know. Tell me something. Gray's Bible. Gray's Bible may offer some protection. The Bible? Yes. It seems to fear it. I, I have to go. Please don't go. You need to tell me something. What do I do? What should I do? All right. If I were you, I'd run as fast as I could. That having been said, we're all grateful that you're here. You're a ray of hope in this sea of darkness. We're counting on you. Counting on you, Tom. I wish you the best of luck. <sighs> I can't do it.
Thank God. Can you help me, please? Come on, get this thing off me. You're the one who put me in here, aren't you? Why are you doing this to me? I need to know I can trust you. Where'd you find this? You want out of that trap or not? I found it here in the basement. Who are you? Tom. Tom Doherty. Tell me what you've seen. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Get me out of this thing first. I want to. I do. But I know this island too well. There's a sickness here. An evil. And I need to know you're not part of it. I I'm not. I'm not. Then how do I know that? Do you really think I would clamp myself into a bear trap? This is going to hurt. I was 10 years old when the world as I knew it came crashing down. My mom had left us, said the island was driving her mad. So it was just my dad and me. I would wander the island thinking I was an explorer on grand adventures. On one of those adventures, I discovered a cave. I just knew there was treasure inside that box. So I ran back up to the house to show my dad. I remember he opened the box and inside there were some old buttons in the Bible. I knew he thought it was important, whatever it was. He told me to get some sleep, because in the morning we were going to the mainland and talking to the authorities. He kissed me goodnight, told me he loved me and was proud of me. The next morning, my dad was gone. I lost my dad, too. Went out fishing one day. Got caught in a storm. His boat made it back okay, but... he wasn't on it. Your, uh, your dad died of a heart attack, right? It's not what happened. To do so I just ran that thing that took my father wasn't gonna let me get away a 
locked myself in my room and waited for it to come. And then he appeared. His name was Benjamin Gray. He was a clergyman from the War of 1812. He stayed with me, protected me all night. The next day, some people showed up. I walked with you down Fen and Ferrell, down cobbles wet with blue. He said my dad died from a heart attack. And since my mother was nowhere to be found, I was plugged into the foster care system. Past the house of pain and sorrow. I bounced around for a while, always trying to tell people the truth. But no one would listen. I finally gave up. I gave up on the truth. I gave up on people. I gave up on life. I've been alone ever since. I just ran away. I couldn't face my fears. You probably think that's pretty lame, huh? No. I did the same thing. It's actually why I took the job on the island. I couldn't deal with my dad's death. My mom. It was easier to just run away from it all. I was actually trying to leave this place when I got stuck in that trap. I was just gonna bail like usual. You can only keep running for so long. Only isolate yourself for so long. It's a lonely way to live. Yeah, I guess that's probably why I came back. I needed some kind of closure. I didn't know what I was gonna find, but something drove me to return. I needed to know I wasn't crazy or proof that I actually was crazy so I could just move on with my life. If you're crazy, then I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's reassuring or not. So what do you know about the warder? Nothing really, I mean, I, I seen it. Kinda, I, I was told it's a demon. <laughs> So you know that trap is useless against it, right? Well, yeah, now I do. So, uh, what is it? The night I met Benjamin Gray, he told me about an English captain named Weston. Weston killed American soldiers during peacetime for the French gold their ship was carrying. He then forced Gray to bury the men on this island and leave no trace of them. The captain and his men were so overcome with their lust for gold, not one of them left the island alive. One by one, they killed each other off. Weston then resorted to uh, cannibalism. In the end, he was more animal than man. His evil deeds chained his soul to the island and he'll do whatever he can to make sure his dark secrets don't come to light. Yeah, no kidding. So what happened to Gray? Gray knew he was never leaving the island alive. So he kept a record of the men who died here in hopes that one day it'd be discovered. There's gotta be over 50 men on that list whose families never got any answers. I know what it's like to not have closure. My dad, I'll never
never really know what happened to him. It's really hard not knowing. You hope that maybe he survived living on an island somewhere. And you cling to that little horrible glimmer of hope. Till one day you just kind of accept the truth. And even though you know the truth, you can't help but wonder what if. Their families deserve to know. I may never find any closure, but this is your chance. Your dad, he was killed trying to expose this whole thing. Come on, let's get out of here. I want to make the mainland before dark. Hey, uh, I know this is like the worst timing, but... I really gotta pee. You seem to be doing much better. I feel like a new man. Been doing a little reading. And they came unto the other side of the sea, and immediately there met them a man. A man with an unclean spirit, who had made his dwelling among the tombs. Why are you doing this? No man could bind him. No. Not even with chains. Tom, stop it. He had often been bound with chains and fetters, but the chains had been plucked asunder by him. 
and the fetters broken in pieces. Stop it! And the man asked him, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, we are legion, for we are many. trusted you don't take your frustrations out on poor stupid fat Thomas it was just sheer providence for me that he happened to stumble across you the Lord does work in mysterious ways doesn't he Finally finish what I started. Don't take another step! Do you really want to kill the one person who understands you? You pull that trigger, and Tom's dead. I, on the other hand, will live to fight another day. Who are you? of course! I've also been called the Warder. I go by a multitude of names. We're all one and the same. A legion, if you will. You know, you've been real trouble for me. You're the one person who knew my secret and escaped. I've been in torment over that. Your mother. Huh? She almost got away. That was a close one. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. No, no, it's not true. My mother left the island years ago. No, she didn't. Her bones aren't far from here, actually. <laughs> You're lying! It's interesting. Lighthouses are built to warn people of danger. People think of the light as a... a beacon of salvation. But in reality, getting close to the light will be your undoing. No one believes or cares about you. You have no family. You have nothing to live for. You're alone. Completely and utterly alone. Tell you what, I will give you the opportunity to take your life into your own hands. You can end it here and now. Or you can wind up like Thomas, a soulless puppet for me to play with.
agony you experience in your final moments will be hell compared to what awaits you on the other side. How I look forward to it. I'll be waiting. Get to the lighthouse. Signal for help. What's been done in the dark must be brought to the light. I cast you out, unclean spirit! In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ! It is he who commands you! It is he who flung you headlong from the heights of heaven into the depths of hell! For he has cast you forth into outer darkness, where everlasting ruin awaits you and your abettors. Your abode is a nest of serpents. So get down on your knees and crawl! You might delude man, but God, you cannot mock. From all evil, deliver us all more. From all sin! From the snares of the devil, <laughs> anger, hatred, and all ill will from everlasting death. Let your mighty hand <laughs> cast him out of your servant Thomas, our team, through your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God!
remains of those men to deserve respect and a proper burial. We look forward to a big repatriation service in honor of the men from the state on the 20th of this month, sponsored by Murphy's Pub. I gotta say, Murph, you look a whole lot of them, Jamie. Especially if we're looking for the best clam chowder around. The Lighthouse Restoration Committee is planning a large memorial garden built on the island, weather permitting, uh, in honor of the service. Thank you.